man, you come straight out of a cunt. Who, who would y'all want to see her out? represent? Like, like, what characters would you like to see go through? Because one of my biggest ones, I think, I think because this character is, is such a lovable character in the comics, but also I don't need a full movie about her, I would love to see a rep- like a Gwenpool situation that has to go through that courthouse. Because, you know, Gwenpool is influenced by Deadpool, but, like, she's really a knockoff, but she's still, like, kind of like same like she's wild in, in this world in the comic book world i think that that would be a dope case for her to be within the she-hawk series hmm. that's that's going to take a lot that's going to take a yeah, lot you know it's going to take a lot you this is me being ambitious you got to introduce Gwen. that's a lot i i actually still wouldn't mind a she uh, a deadpool thing i would love to uh, for deadpool to be <laughs> deadpool got arrested for trying to trespass on the sony lot so he could meet tom holland <laughs> that's funny. Hey, 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 not like that. And I actually enjoy. like that. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be like, like I love to see some funny shit like that for her to have to deal with. I would love yeah, that. that. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say. I was just going to say that could. It would be hilarious if that's the way that they introduce him actually into the MCU. Like his case is dealing with him as a property, but then at the the end result is he wins his case and now he can be a part of the MCU like in fully. Like that would have been hilarious. Mm. And 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 even to make it to where you ain't got to worry about no fourth wall break, he want to be able to drop the f bomb whenever he can. Oh, <laughs> so, first show you keep hearing it bleep and stuff like like so you see <laughs> yeah like what fuck 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 it you fuck and it's just boop, boop, boop. yeah you can't really do that on this show. Mm. But, uh, it's like that's what I'm fighting for. My next movie finna come out and I want all the bombs. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. Man. Yeah. But that'd be another thing too. Um on you know, like if you want to get on a more realistic note, um, that's also another way to introduce mutants more too. Yes. That can, it can be another chapter into that. Like she is having to defend these kids or something like that, or somebody that's done something with their powers, didn't know that that was happening and everything like that. And so she's asking, because again, that will come up in interviews too with them. It's like, okay, so how did you get your powers? I don't know. Like one day I just woke up and my eyes started turning red and they were just shooting beams out. Be like, so you didn't have like no accident, no nothing. Because again, we haven't seen that part be traced. So Jennifer could be one of the people that helped piece that together and stuff. And then you start uh, one person she could meet that's still not important in x-men but also gives that x-men is uh what's her name moira mctaggart because she was a oh, doctor yeah so she it. that's yeah, yeah, yeah. she she could get introduced to moira mctaggart and she's one of the head people of like mutant gene uh, uh, uh stuff like that for the next evolution because somebody got to be studying that stuff right now well yeah that, that's because that was my theory from the beginning is that like this is going to introduce that mutant registration act like <laughs> with the inhibitor and everything that i would have loved to see like if that if, even if that was the the easter egg for next season like you know when the, when they broke out when when wong broke out abomination for damage control to be like look wong is going as he as he please and you know them not necessarily being able to label Wong. I mean, we know he's Sorcerer Supreme, but I can see somebody mislabeling him like, see, mutants is out here running reckless. We need to do something about this. And that be like the, oh shit, Jen's gonna have to deal with this in court because now the government wants to govern all these superpower beings. That may be what the plot is for Captain America 4 or Thunderbolts. Because based off of how you're saying it, you need more events to body up to that. So you yeah. need more things for it to happen for us to know publicly, like like these, like how, how Dion said, like there's no sightings of them yet, except for the like little article we saw about the yeah. man with claws attacking and the thing. And once we start seeing more of that, then it starts to sprinkle a, a, a senator want to push this bill, yeah. you know, seeing that in the back, like them wanting to push a bill to deal with these outbreaks of people with powers and these mutations that are happening among here. And then too, like the conspiracy theorists start even making it worse. Like, yo, is it because of the attack in New York? Oh, you know, when when Thanos came, like he left this, this thing around that activated all of us. Like, you know, everything we've come up with, they can start throwing into there that shows like, okay, this is starting to become a problem. Mm. Yeah. I definitely, also, go ahead. No, 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 you go, go ahead. 
I when I saw her mention X Men, it's like, why are you doing this? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why as a as an excited fan, it's like, why are you doing this if y'all aren't gonna give us X Men right now? Because here's another thing. We could get an X Men film, which of course we'd all line up to see, or oh come on, come on! You could I'll just give us a ten or fifteen episode series and mm -hmm. then do the movie, because you could cover way more ground doing an hour series of X Men yep. on Disney than you would just doing a quick ass movie in the, the theater. So what if they did? What if they did a series of each character? Main I'm character. down with that too. Walking Dead I'm style. Go I, was ahead, about, I, was about say, I was about to say though too though that goes back to your though of the big wigs getting put into television so based off of yours mm -hmm. who would that focus on but that's the, the thing okay so by what Dion just said you could do that easily and have the number one heads in X-Men because we don't know who's cast as who yeah, right? right so if you do the X-Men series you can show your A-list actors on the on the Disney Plus series because you've shown us. Uh, I don't watch Star Wars. I watch the earlier films, but I stopped by the time they got to Rogue Wars. But I mean Rogue One. But if you did a series and you let's say you had Carlos Carlos um, Esposito, what's his name, man? Um, Gian Carlos. Yeah, Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. So if you had him and you had Denzel Washington rumored to play Professor X and uh, Magneto, if you showed them in the series, now I'm like, oh, now I'm getting the story that I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And then you could do the film after you've done the season of every X-Men that you want, as far as it's, if it's a bigger story. Episode one has to show us what mutants are. Then you got to show us the genesis of it. And as far as we were introduced to mutants, Professor X and Magneto were the first two. Well, also, too, like how you just put it, though, those how you even shaping up the episodes, you already showing it to where how that can work well, because the first two episodes, like you said, one is us showing what mutants are. And then also, two, you don't necessarily have to give everything away because you can even track back to Apocalypse without having to show him. You could just have the the acolytes, the four horsemen, talking about him, uh, you know, saying his name Abansur and stuff, and praising mm -hmm. him. Because again, you could cast them without them having to be big names. Because the four mm -hmm. horsemen at the time, you can make anybody for that. And so that second one is us seeing us. today what the aftermath is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as a man, you show that. I love that you're saying that. But when you said Abansur, that's so funny because that's the name of the Green Lantern that gave Hal Jordan his ring. So it's so it? funny how Marvel and DC have shared uh, origin stories mm -hmm. and names for characters. That's wild. But yeah. then like how you said, three and four can introduce us to Charles and Xavier. Yeah. Well, and Charles I and... Uh, mm -hmm. Charles <laughs> and Xavier. <laughs> Charles and Xavier. The first name and the last name. Right. What, what, the great thing about X... <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll go to DC. So we're gonna see Clark and Kent, and you know, hope yeah. he can give us. <laughs> Y'all see Bruce and Wayne, right? You gotta see Bruce, Bruce and Wayne. Wayne. Bruce, yeah, and Bruce yeah, and Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> the great thing about X Men, though, in general, too, is that like because everybody has their awakening moment, like yeah. you can follow certain mutants in a story. You know, you can follow yeah. Rogue's story before she gets. You know, before Cyclops. she gets. Uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can follow all these stories before the you know the uh, the school of, of gifted individuals is created. <laughs> well, actually, you just said it based off of how CT laid it out. If you do a ten episode arc, you just that's how you introduce the original X Men. Yeah. So you can show it to where like even to how at one point like how they did X Men's uh, uh what it was uh not Days of Future but First Class. When they fought in the Cuban Missile Crisis, mm -hmm. that can mm -hmm. also be another template that they can use as yeah. far as like, yo. So at one point there were people around that helped us with this stuff because we but learned that about do, You do. This is the brilliant thing. So Days of Future Past. I mean Days of Future Past. X Men First Class and X Men. What was the second one? You right. Days of Future Past. No, mm -hmm. first one was First Class. Second was Days of Future Past. I thought that was the third one. Yeah. No. Okay, and the third, no, the third one was third Apocalypse. One was 
third one was Phoenix. Okay, third one. No, no, Phoenix. no. I'm sorry. No, no. You're right. Apocalypse, then Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, so they did four in total: First Class, Days of Future Past, uh, Apocalypse, and then Dark Phoenix. So here's the mm -hmm. thing: this is how brilliant it could be. They could do ten episodes, and each episode jumps back forward present day as far as timing so if you do episode one showing us what mutants are episode two you show us uh professor xavier episode three you show us bishop and cable episode four you show us apocalypse episode five you show us like that's what i'm saying jump around the timeline yeah. to where now we understand this and it doesn't have to be what i'm proposing doesn't have to be you introducing the x-men as far as all of them joining professor x's academy but you're showing us individual stories to where if now if you want to do a film you can do a film of all of them joining together as x-men and also you're giving them that reason for that to happen so right it's like we see what can happen in the future and we also see why now there needs to be not only a group of these people to do that but then also a safe haven for them because that's the one thing too that i think they could really uh, help tie in. And this is showing how Charles turned that into a school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got an idea. <laughs> I'm trying to think of movies like this. What if it was 10 episodes? Each episode was a different character, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of each episode, something major happened. So they all are tied into like a a, a point of like, like they have an origin story, then like a, a huge explosion happened. Like, like what happened? That'd be the end of the episode, of each episode. Then the final episode is them coming together. It's like, who are you? It's like, hey, like, sort of like. <laughs> so, is, and what you're saying is kind of like how they did in Heroes when they had, when the show Heroes was out, when everybody was, that you showed everybody's story up into the eclipse. Right. That's what you're doing. <laughs> why, are you, why are you doing the, the triangle? <laughs> I was trying to. You know I what I mean? Trying, something <laughs> happened. Like, this, this, is Dion, this is Dion's TED talk. Like, okay, it, so this is what we got to get to, right? What's the hand in the water? <laughs> it's the hand in the water. They all see the hand. Like, yo, what is that? Well, heard about the hand. Yeah. <laughs> coming back to fight, we got man. We gotta make sure this hand don't be here. This hand, <laughs> even table, like yo, that hand is still here in my time. All right, that hand, hand is still here in my time. That's still here. That's still, that's still here. They ain't nothing about that. Yeah, that, that let, me, let me ask you. Let me ask you this: Would y'all be totally fine if they kept the same younger X Men for MCU? Absolutely not. No. Yeah, absolutely not. Wait, it, cert, certain ones I would be okay with. Certain ones I won't. Get them all the fuck out of here. Well, how about the older ones? Wait, what are you Wolverine, saying? What would we be fine with the characters Wolverine. that they cast in the movies? I'm would you be sure. fine with the younger or the uh, newer X Men to be to be same character? What I'm saying is, are you talking about the newest iteration of X Men? Them continuing to be X Men? Yeah. The ones oh, you find with would, would you be fine with that? Here's the thing. I would be fine completely with young Professor X and young Magneto. I would also be fine with, uh, even though I know it's humanly impossible for us to get Hugh Jackman to be Wolverine for another 10 years. Uh, <laughs> it's humanly impossible. <laughs> His body is going to break down at some point. Uh, shout out to him for even wanting to do it for the Daredevil movie. Right. I mean, a uh, Deadpool movie. But I'm fine with those two being their characters. And I'm. There was another X Men. Oh, the girl who played uh, in Game of Thrones, who was. Phoenix. Sophia. Yeah. Sophie something. I think I would be okay with her continuing on as her character, but I need, I need uh, the Jason dude, the original Cyclops, to continue being Cyclops. I need, I need a new Cyclops. I need a '90s Cyclops. I need mm. a six foot three. That nigga's tall as hell. I, I got laser beam eyes. Yeah. I'll fuck you up. He was I need tall. I need that arrogant a hole. Cyclops. Jason Marsden. Yeah, I need I need that dude, the dude that know like, yo, I gotta watch the whole X Men on my shoulders, 
and I gotta watch this old creepy dude with claws trying to screw my wife. Like I, I never mean, knew that he was the. Uh, I remember as a kid, Cyclops was tall and more commanding. But when the movie came out and they showed Jason Marsden as Cyclops, he did carry the role greatly as far as being a leader and being a. Uh, I won't say confident, yeah. but he was like a teacher's pet. But Wolverine yeah. was written to be the leader of the x-men in those films so i never felt that jason mars then was a great leader per se look here, look here man make john seen the cyclops skip this up, wow man. that would be amazing make john seen the wow. cyclops he's too old wow. though he is a little too old but we got cg though we got look yeah. we got cg if we can make Samuel L. Jackson look the way he looked in Captain Marvel, we can That's do anything. Funny. That's true. How, I always will say, like, how do how do Cyclops miss? If I'm looking at you, I am hitting you. There's no, there's no, ah, I miss. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm shooting oh. your ankles, what, nigga. What, I'm shooting your I head. Be, I may be using the wrong word, inertia and stuff like that. So it's kind of also too, like when a gun goes off, the recoil of it is like the so. same thing with his eyes. So that's why like, and you, also, ever know, uh, you ever notice when they knock it off, his stuff do like this yeah. and he just, oh, yeah. he get bobbleheaded yeah. and just be like, oh. Close your eyes, nigga, close yeah. your eyes. And it, like, and it also, he's not shooting at just regular niggas. He's shooting at other superpower beings. So like, I, I now, it, it's, it's it, it makes sense why that some people may be able to dodge it. How's he not we, shot his eyelids off? Go ahead, Will, I'm sorry. And it, it'd be also. <laughs> <laughs> Like it's all of this shit, and you gotta fucking close your eyes. How you that shot your That goes to my question. my question. I'm like, what force is these red beings? Because Man. I've yeah. seen you tear up train stations, but Nigga. you hit somebody and don't nobody get split in two. Right. Yeah. That's funny. Like, yeah, and that's, that's actually though, right. Yeah. Right? And he had normal glasses on a couple of times. So, so if he did like an accident, he could shoot somebody. <laughs> Ray Bans. Ray Bans. Ray Bans on. Like, here's the question. Not the, not the granny look. The granny look. Not only. <laughs> <laughs> not only did you not shoot your eyelids off, but how the fuck did you not blow your brains out if, if glasses are the only thing keeping you from shooting? Big Bang, nigga, you should be dead. And ricochet, poof! Oh! <laughs> hey. Hold on, let me, let me, let me open that door. Wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry! Oh, Grandma! No, I'm sorry! Grandma! <laughs> Yo, but <laughs> that shit just bouncing ricochet and stuff. Yeah, oh, shit. That, that, that's some of the shit you gotta look at. But I would love to see a new a new Cyclops. Okay. Ever since watching uh, Game of Thrones, like how you say, I don't mind her being fe uh, uh, Jean, but I need her to turn it up. I like Definitely. I, yeah, that's what I said. I need her to turn it up. That's what. Yeah, mean. I didn't like that's that softness like, she was giving. The writing like wasn't. That. Here's the thing. This is what we got to take away. X Men First Class was good. X Men Days of Future Past was brilliant because it fixed everything but aside from those two anomalies the sony and fox films were not written properly so when you have marvel studios they're going to do everything well they were doing everything <laughs> perfectly because this is the house that they are built on so there should never be a bad marvel movie in a sense that's why I give so many passes to DC because even though DC was Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers was sold to Discovery. So these things are no longer under one roof. So Marvel should never have a bad movie because you can literally go straight from the source material to give us comic accurate films. I don't know what happened with Eternals. Go ahead. Only Sony movie that was good was uh, Morbius. So. I beat your ass with a lead pipe. <laughs> so, we're so, we not putting Morbius as top five greatest Marvel movies. Oh no. my god! Wow, y'all so acting different, not, huh? So we not ready for is Morbius time. We not it's we not Morbius. excited for the sequel. Let me tell you how thirsty that they were for y'all to like Morbius. One person tweeted, "It's yes. Morbin time." <laughs> And the studio was like, oh, oh, time for re-release. It's like, hey, man, this ain't a thing. But who thought that, who approved that? That's exactly. the person I want to know. Who thought, like, you know what? You right. Whoever owns you the property. It. It's, some, it's, one, it's one person who's like, no, 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 y'all just ain't giving it a good shot. Like, watch it under this way. Like, you're like, this one person <laughs> that is caping for this. thousands of dollars to redistribute this. It's like, the hey, movie. you know what? I don't uh, think nobody knew it was out. 
That's right. I think, I think <laughs> they made it up with you. Ah, it was busy like, in four weeks. This was out. That's what it was. What what came like, out you, around that time? So you, with Meryl Street. Street. That's what. That's what. With Meryl Street. Street. Like, also, movies are staying crazy. shorter. Yeah. Movies in the theater shorter and shorter now. They'll be like, hey, yo, it comes to the movie on Monday. It's in theater <laughs> next Monday. you be like, it's yeah. in hell next Monday. Yeah, Disney like, Plus. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just went and saw Bullet Train. They was like, come in the digital and HBO. I just yeah. went watch this. <laughs> right. That's that was a good I movie, wasted too. my money. I wasted right? my money last Friday. It's already on uh, Netflix. God damn it. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not damn comfortable for me to come here. Like, I could have stayed home and waited. Yeah, and that's the way, bro. It's like, give me a, a movie on streaming. That's one thing that the pandemic did for us was yeah. I don't have to leave my house for anything anymore. And that's what they wanted. But that's another topic mm-hmm. for another time. Yeah, yeah. But um, I know we're about to bring this thing to a yeah. close, though. Um, but any fight, like, so we'll get final thoughts on... Basically, like, you know, we, we already know, we know we'll jump into this next episode, but with everything that's going from what you've seen with She-Hulk, what's about to come, even with some of the Marvel short films and stuff, we see phase four getting ready to round out with Wakanda forever. Like, is it from, you know, the good things, the bad things and the other things? I want to get y'all opinion on where where are you sitting right now currently with phase four? Are we getting better? Are we staying the same? Are we declining? I'm terrified. This is my final thought. I'm terrified because it is, like we said before, the blip was the coup de gras. It was the uh, it was the the end of the the the, 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 the series of the movies. And then it was like, oh shit, uh, how can we keep this going? And now they're scrambling. Now it's all it's a phase one all over again. Uh, but they still try to like bring in things that happened in the original first four uh three phases phases so it's like it's it's terrifying because it's like hey man you, you're losing your audience because we don't know where we're going you're not you're not really tying it in it gave me great i gave them grace when when she hawks start tying in things yeah. they start to kind of like mention names and and things that's happening but i'm, I'm nervous I, I need something to tie in man this is too many big major things that's happening that not enough heroes are being a part of. Yeah, I can see that. I can see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> same feeling. Like I, I like it's, it's. We're in this weird space where like they're giving us individual properties, and I'm like, oh, I like that, and I like it for that. Oh, I like this, and I like it for that. It's kind of like, like you know, it's kind of like we're we're in a layover. Like you know, when you're in a layover, you know, like, oh, this is one set. let me go ahead and let me go, let me go grab something to eat real quick. Let me go check out a magazine. Like I feel like that's where we're at in the MCU. Is like I can't wait till we get back on the main flight so we can get to our destination. Yeah. So that's kind of where funny. I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to do this to go before me, so he ain't never me. So here's the thing: I feel. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! <laughs> Thinking deuces is young interrupt deuces. Thinking. So here's how I go: uh, When you see what's happened, I'm gonna make it so simple for you to get the first. Th- what did uh, what did uh, end game ended uh, phase three right or phase two? Phase three. Okay. Is the- Okay, so Endgame is phase phase three. The reason all those movies worked weren't because they were just incredible. It's because they had time to focus on one story, right? They did not. Now, what we've seen in these next few phases has been the extensive extended universe. And when you do that, when you got too much extending, you got TV shows, you got cartoons, you got more movies. All of that is drawing your attention away from a focal point. The thing that they didn't have before was Disney Plus. They just had to crank out movies. They had uh, they had given license for Netflix to do, you know, the projects, but they didn't have a part of that. They were just like, yeah, yeah, yeah go do your thing. Oh, Daredevil turned out good. Oh, The Punisher was a masterpiece. All right, well, congratulations. We'll see what happens in the next couple of years. So once Disney Plus came into play. You would think things would be more centered, but they're not because now with everything that's happened, they can't just focus on one story and a film. They're doing so many different things that it looks convoluted. And then 
there have been too many statements made over the past three years talking about uh yeah you know um we're not building for anything we're just getting you to know other characters and then they're like well we are building for something but that's that's further out and it's like it's too many cooks in the kitchen now beyond feige now the directors yeah. of marvel are able to say something in comparison to what they were before before it was one band one sound kevin feige now it's <laughs> whoever it. has a popular movie that comes out now they get a chance to say what some of the plans are and what they do or don't want to do yeah um i think i think you and deuce did put that uh into great segment with, with that it's like you're they're still trying to find that balance with this because like how, how how deuce has said to the point of phase four is like appetizers like we had happy hour right now like <laughs> the, same, the same main core shit. like you know what i'm saying like we got a couple of good ones that seafood tower being captain america wasn't all that but you know these these, these toaster pastries over here that was was moon night you should try save your appetite. Save your save appetite. Your appetite yeah because you know mm -hmm. they Phase five, you know, we gonna we gonna start getting back into our meat and potatoes, and that's even two at the end of four, starting with Wakanda forever. And then even the same thing with CT's point. I think the issue was was that there's so many things that y'all are trying to say, and it's like, yo, y'all should just stop talking, stop telling us what's going on, stop saying shit, because now you starting to sound like DC a little bit, and we don't right. like when they do that because it's like because <laughs> it's like because the formula is technically there and y'all shouldn't have to keep trying to tell it's like oh you know we're not doing anything that's gonna tie in here yes you are otherwise you wouldn't be making this stuff just tell us like hey this is the ant-man saga okay when just like how uh deuce said with a layover when we were waiting on avengers and that next big one hey go see ant-man we ain't we know ant-man ain't all that but go see ant-man and ant-man delivered every time because as to uh ct's point it was just a film mm -hmm. but now that it's like okay you took on the responsibility of we're going to make series now and not only are we making series you have to watch these series in order to understand the next chapter in these movies mm -hmm. so you took on an even bigger responsibility because the the precedent you said it for the first one was okay so who's the next big ones we about to see mm -hmm. since this phase four who's the next one is it oh is it gonna be iron man Oh, we got one division. Oh, okay. Um, it's, it's, oh, maybe they're gonna show us the X Men. Oh, damn. We got Captain <laughs> America. So, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Oh, uh, well, maybe we gonna get a. Uh, maybe we'll finally get another Spider Man. Oh, damn it, this Marvel. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. What? What's going on here? And so, but like how they said was, we're giving you more for people who can't either be in a big movie who can't be in a series and then it's like you already started giving yourself that perfect formula like you did with one band one sound with the tv series and now these shorts it's like whoever your like fan favorite is like how they did with uh uh john as uh mr fantastic and gave us that you can give us that in these smaller presentations like werewolf by night you can give this to us within these series it's like the overall thing for y'all is just Shut the fuck up. Yeah. We go go see the shit regardless. Yeah. We coming. Yeah. Here's coming. the thing. When you see, and this is the, the biggest problem. This goes back to something you said earlier about Dr. Strange, where you said he's not the guy. Dr. Strange won. I was like, okay, I can see him being Tony Stark-ish, right? And the reason that everybody mentions Tony Stark is because you built your entire universe off of Robert Downey Jr., and what that means is if you're going to do a film or you're going to do a TV show or you plan to have another character release, you need to have somebody with the charisma, talent, humor, look and delivery of Robert Downey Jr. And you need a star. And what's so ironic about you saying that, CT, Benedict Cumberbatch actually plays Tony Stark more to the comics than Robert did. Absolutely. Because Iron Man is not a likable person. Like Iron no. Man is a drunk. Mm -hmm. Iron Man is an asshole. <laughs> like no, for real. Like, like, like that. That's the reason why Doctor Strange don't hit because you you're showing us what Tony Stark really is like, and we're now seeing how Robert Downey made him more likable. Like we didn't yes, see we did. him beat that woman. Like when we saw him like womanizing a little bit it wasn't as harsh because you still had pepper there it's like okay we see him you know the dude that's got the daddy issues that's still trying to make it but it's like with benedict it's like 
you such a fucking asshole. And <laughs> you get to go learn to be master of the mystic arts because your stupid ass was on the phone while you was driving a fast ass <laughs> car through a hill. And now you can't do surgery and keep making all this money and fucking all these white women. So now <laughs> this other white woman that's supposed to be Chinese that then gave you all these powers got you fighting a white dude. Bring Wong back. I don't like you. But here's what's wrong with you. He has shades of, oh man, I like this guy. And maybe that's because I, as a person and as a personality, can identify more with the character choices of Tony Stark and Doctor Strange. Like, I'm both of them. So it's like, I'm like, oh, I love these guys. But hearing what you said, I'm like, these are reasons people said they don't like me. So I completely understand. <laughs> but in the same token, it's like, you need an, a true anchor that is a fan favorite to lock this in. And unfortunately for Feige, he lost Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. back to back. Man. And we all Man. thought, well, we got Chris Hemsworth. We got Thor. And then Thor Love and Thunder came out and we said, what the fuck is this? <laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny how his progression is how his character is in the actual story. It's like, what the fuck is your character doing? Like, oh, you're going to be angry. <laughs> that you that is true. I don't know what I'm on that right now, true. man. I, I got a kid now. Like, why? Who why do you have this kid? Who 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 decided this dude is the one that should be a parent? No, <laughs> that was such a dumb move. And we know you set up for the Young Avengers, but you don't have to set him up with that. You could have you could have left like the this. girl with, like uh, with Valkyrie. In that way, you free up Thor. But it's yeah, like yeah. you're gonna make everybody in the MCU be a father. No, well, and that and that's the thing too. It was like yeah. that kind of shot She Hulk in the foot a little bit too because you see them kind of rectifying that because she was like yo what's with everybody and these daddy issues and then now everybody's dads and it's like everybody's dad yeah this is gonna be horrible because now you know ain't nobody oh. gonna say this this is star wars speaking of speaking of she hulk one thing that she called out but then it also backfired in her face when she was like all marvel movies in this way did y'all realize that all marvel shows that have been kind of ending the same way with them talking to like a godlike figure explaining what happened just happened in the show like when you watch what if you had that moment where the narrator was doing it when you see loki talking to um he who shall not who uh, who shall not Whoa. Whoa. Who remain yeah you see him explaining everything that just happened her talking to kevin explaining everything that just happened it's like yo these shows is kind of doing the exact same thing like you had but, Agatha telling them everything that happened that goes back to something Fahey said that, uh, you know, CT always brings up. Fahey has already said that he's putting all of his money on Jonathan Majors. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. And I, so it shows you a bit. I feel like the world is putting all their money on Jonathan Majors. All right, you like, look, listen, I, I just watched that Creed trailer. <laughs> and I was like, yo, if he. He should have played T'Challa. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, yo, because this dude. If you play a tenth of which is what I seen in this Creed trailer, because I was like watching the Creed trailer, I was like, "Yo, he gonna fuck Michael B. Jordan up." <laughs> hey, like, hey, I'm, I he ain't gonna die, hold you. you <laughs> that's you what I, I said. This buddy, you finna get like your daddy. It don't exactly. make sense. They in two different weight class, though. It don't even make sense. Why in two weight classes? The second, the second would be me, but he fought a six foot eight Russian. That's that was terrible. crazy. <laughs> that was, <laughs> yeah, I was like, and if we can be honest. Apollo ain't, I mean, Apollo, uh, Adonis has not won a fight yet. No. So what are we, what legacy are we talking about here? He's lost the last <laughs> movie. He lost the movie before that. It's like now he looks like he's about to lose this one. And it's like, Jonathan Majors is so on fire right now, bro, yeah, right. that I yeah. promise you they're about to make him the next sex symbol for black women. All right, man. They tried to do that. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. no, no. Just, You're just forcing it. That was, a, that, was a, that was a good try, Dion. I got a hard out. I got a hard out. <laughs> he, did, he did say 330. He, he did. did. They tried to do it with Yaya, the brother who played Candyman, oh. and he's uh, Black Manta, but it didn't really hit yet. Like, no project. He's um He hasn't gotten the right project for all black women to be like, oh, right? Mm -hmm. So with Jonathan Majors, this Creed thing might be that. 
CT1, I'm going to agree with you, and we're going to see because I'm calling it now. Jonathan Majors probably will get Sexiest Man Alive on People Magazine uh, just because he's been on the road. Secondly, oh, yeah. though, as I mentioned, thanks to Ali Sadiq, you can always go back in time and see what someone fucked up. Uh, Same thing for y'all. When he fucked that polar bear in Black Mirror, that was it for hey, you, buddy. Hey, oh, you talking about Yaya? Yep, yeah, that was it yeah, for that, you, buddy. That was it for that, you. They not the streets not gonna love you after that. Well, him and uh, Anthony Mackie, Anthony Mackie, yeah, they both he, had the same he, episode. He been here though, like yo, like it's it's kind of like how Meek Mills when he took on Drake. Had uh, Meek Mills been here a little bit longer, you could have took on Drake, but you hadn't. You didn't have enough in your tank to, for you to go after him like that. At the time, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's the same thing. Like Mackie's done enough to where it's like, okay, like you've done films, like we've seen you do it. This one, it's like you like for him. You have certain choices you need to make in films right now, and what you choose to do. Like even him in Watchmen, I was like, yo, this is good. Even you in Candyman, but I'm like, as you just said. You're not doing nothing that targets one of your biggest audiences, which is black yeah. women. They fit like, yo, you you shouldn't even bring Tangerine to see uh, Creed 3. You gonna leave piss. I just watched the trailer and I was like, hey man, I don't I don't know what steroid job out there. <laughs> you know, so That's what like I, I had said it. I said, if your woman has never watched any Marvel movie, but now she's talking about, oh, I can't wait till Ant-Man come out. Just know it has nothing to do with Ant Man, bro. Like it literally has not one thing to do with Ant Man. She she is going to see it because of Anthony. I mean, not Anthony. Uh, Jonathan hey, Major, bro. <laughs> but it makes it. But it makes him terrifying, though. Like even like again, we still haven't seen him as Kang. Yeah. And so it's like to see that small part we saw in Loki and the fear that he gave us just being the person that's seen it all. All the like like even to just take it back to that those hands have killed hundreds to thousands of Avengers. And look mm -hmm. how he sat there and had a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. Imagine the one that's brash, don't care, and just want to fight. Mm -hmm. And well, then see it, that tip, that small of it in that trailer of Creed 3, I'm like, yo, this dude gonna be a real problem. I'm gonna have to watch this look. trailer now. Damn it. <laughs> well, cause I know that y'all, like I said, CT don't watch trailers, but like that little clip of him talking to Ant-Man, like it gives you exactly what you're saying because like it's pure disrespect. He's like, you were you a what an Avenger? Did I kill you before? Like it's like just pure disrespect to whoever like Avengers and Ant Man is. So that 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 clip that made me excited to see his cane because I'm like, yo, this he about to be just disrespectful throughout this whole phase. Mm. And then if that's the case, that gives them a good blanket to kind of shadow all of these characters under to get them created because you know like they are leading to secret wars which i think like how how you even pointed out ct if they keep the formula of the major head stay in movies yeah the the, the big one the, you know the, the the b the b list ones go into like series same thing with the presentation ones you give us enough of a formula to where as Kang is setting up everything, we get to see how these others can play either a small part or a big part mm -hmm. when Kang Dynasty comes and the Secret Wars come. But it still goes back to them of just shutting the fuck up. Yeah. Because even what they gave away for Ironheart, I'm not going to say it on here. It was just like, why of all shows is that character getting introduced on this one? I'm so glad I don't know what you're talking about, but I will right. say me either. When I I'm see when I see that they have started announcing things, it's like <sighs> because they announced things so early, and then now when we get news like we got at the end of last week, where you got to delay certain things, it's like this should not happen. This hasn't been you guys in the past. What is now causing y'all to hold off delay production and push things back? I think it goes back to what you said. I think they are doing way too much. Mm -hmm. I think like how you said, when it was all one band, one sound, I think going into these multiple Disney series, 
also focusing on the cartoons, trying to make these movies, consistently trying to merge these other titles and collect everything you've already made, while then also, too, letting us know you're trying to appease us yeah. as the audience by doing fan favorite stuff. It's like, eventually, all of this is going to hit a speed bump. And yeah. it's just like, it goes back to what you just said. It's like, you're trying, it's like, I don't know why y'all are still trying to grab an audience like your audience is here like mm -hmm. it's not like you got to keep telling us hey we make marvel stuff now we make movies we make sure we do all that bro we here we here just announce what just announce the title like hey we got a new captain movie coming out bet because guess what we're gonna do stuff just like this people gonna talk about it people gonna try to figure out things that's going on mm -hmm. just like and, and thor was great example of how that can go you just don't need to make it such a I don't want to call it a crappy movie, but such a, you know, kind of slumped movie. You can yeah. keep it to where I don't see no trailers till what, a month before it comes out? Mm -hmm. And then still, I mean, keep I'll, it as a teaser. Don't give me everything. Keep it as a teaser. I was going to say, I'll, 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 I'll take it up a notch. I think Marvel has done so much dopeness that they don't even need trailers at this point. Like, no. I, like I get it. That's the old model. That's the way it goes. But you don't need a trailer. We, we was going to go out and see Wakanda Forever no matter what. If they just said, we finally got a date, Wakanda, ever, Wakanda Forever on this date and just showed us the movie poster, it's still going to sell out no matter what. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us uh, with two episodes. I'm just keeping honest, you're gonna see this ending twice. So, the previous episode <laughs> talking about She Hulk, and this episode with us is talking about Marvel, DC, and catching up with so many things and stuff like that. So, as always, I'd like to uh, thank Dion, CT, and of course, Young Deuces for joining on these episodes for us. We hope that y'all enjoyed them. Let us know on She Hulk. You know, what was your favorite episode and your greatest takeaway with She-Hulk? What did you like about the season? What didn't you like about the season? And the same thing for our uh, other show that we just did. How do you feel about DC being able to cater villains to form the heroes mm -hmm. as their new formula for their movies and live action stuff? But before we get out of here, I always like people to let them know where they can be mm -hmm. following and supported. So Young Deuces, mm -hmm. it ain't nothing new. You up. Right. All right. Well, y'all can follow me at Young underscore Deuces. And again, make sure y'all go to Watch Mojo, man. Go to Watch Mojo's page. Check out some of the top 10 lists that I am now voicing. Uh, it's been a blast doing that. So I would definitely like to see some of y'all in that in that in those comments, you know, just, you know, repping and supporting, you know, what I'm saying put out put put the hashtag straight out of comic book S-O-A-C-B. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. S-O-C-B now. Yeah, S-O-C-B. Oh, S-O-C-B now? Okay, yeah, so yeah. Put, yeah. Put the hashtag SOCV. Let them know where you uh, that we repping in there. So yeah. Yes, indeed, man. Yes, indeed. And as y'all know, always make sure you support this. Support my YouTube channels. Back on the Twitch. Going hey, back on Twitch, man. I'm live. Back, man. Yes, Ready man. For that. Come check me out on Twitch Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays, and then as well as Saturdays and Sundays. You can check out my cs network that's the can't sleep network go to my twitch mm -hmm. and you can watch some of all of my favorite content i've been in it's over 300 episodes which means it's over hours Ooh. of content that you can just go watch on saturdays and sundays on my twitch channel going all the way from sunday starting at 6 a.m from i mean saturday 6 a.m all the way till sunday midnight three all the 20, 48 hours of me go Yes, indeed. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out another episode of Straight Out of Comic Books. And I have been your host, Will Farrow. This has been Young Deuce, and we will catch you next time. Hey.